Hey friends, welcome to your Friday recovery reading. I'm going to be doing this every Friday to get you set for the weekend because you're going to be staying sober over the weekend, right? So thanks for hanging out. I'm Jody Stevens. I've been sober for 16 years. So I just want to take some time each week and just kind of tell you what's worked for me and some things that that uh, my husband and I've done. You know, he's been sober for, for 19 years and working on my uh, second master's degree to get my addiction counseling counseling license. And so um, I just, you know, right, they say in recovery, you can't keep it unless you give it away. So that's the plan. So I'd love it if you'd hit the subscribe button and maybe the little bell. That way, every time I do a video, you'll know and uh, then we can hang out. So wh I want to read something to you. Uh, this is from the Recovery Devotional Bible. And it's just great to read because it takes the people in the Bible who are like severely messed up. <laughs> I mean, they're just as messed up as we are today. And it, it applies, uh, you know, psychology and recovery to their behavior. So you can go, oh, that's why he did that or whatever, you know, so it's pretty cool. But anyway, so this scripture that I'm going to share with you actually comes from John, uh, John chapter five, verses one through five. And or actually John chapter five, verses one through nine. So what was happening during this time was this was Jesus when his ministry, when he was here on earth doing his ministry. OK, and one of the things that he did besides miracles was that he healed people, which was also miracles. So he did a lot of miracles and signs. And Jesus is still healing people today and delivering them from their addictions. And what's happening in this particular verse is during this time, there was what was called some healing waters. It was a pool. It was like the pool of Bethesda is what they called it. And people would hang out by this pool. And every once in a while, an angel would come down and stir the waters. And the per first person in the water would then be healed. Okay, so that's what's happening. And Jesus comes upon this scene, right? The ultimate healer, the son of God comes upon these healing waters. And I'm going to have to put my glasses on now. Ever since I started school again a second time, I've been like blind as a bat. It could be age, but we won't talk about that. So it says, um, now there in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate, a pool, there was a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda. It says here, uh, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, you know, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. Okay, so... 38 years, the guy's been laying by the water, okay? Uh, when Jesus saw him lying there, learned that he'd been in this condition for a long time, he says to him, do you want to get well? This is very important. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. When I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me, he says. So for 38 years, he's been laying there by this, he, the healing waters, 38 years, somebody just always goes ahead of him and no one decides to be a Samaritan and put him in the water. So I don't know the history, but I find that kind of hard to believe. So think about this again. Jesus is saying, do you want to get well? Because I can do that for you. Okay. But it's a partnership. We're going to work together. I need to know. Do you want to get well? So then the guy gives him the big excuse, but in his compassion, Jesus heals him anyway. So Jesus says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And he probably said it nicer than that, but maybe not. Um, it says at once the man was cured and he picked up his mat and he walked. So what's so fascinating about this is when Jesus would heal people, talk to people, do things, we tend to just read it and go, oh, that's neat. You know, he would heal somebody and they, he'd say, now go back and don't tell anyone. And of course, they always told everybody, you know, or things like that. But when you really start to look at it, he will basically ask people certain things because he's he, he sees who they are and he knows what their issue is. So it's probably possible that this guy was very much defined by being an invalid, by being um, a victim, right? And so that can happen so often in our addiction, right? Because we may have been taught 
to that we don't have a lot of power maybe based on the way that we were raised or sometimes being a victim is a lot easier than being strong because sometimes being a victim defines us and this situation with this man this this victimology thing it probably really defined him in many ways and i used to struggle with that all the time because what happens in this type of a situation when this being a victim can define us it can also happen in addiction and codependency and stuff like that because a lot of times we can confuse love and self-pity but they're not the same thing and i used to kind of be like that it was like my self-esteem was so low that i was like okay you can't love me but you can feel sorry for me you know, hear my sad story. But, but what Jesus is asking is, no, I want you to be victorious, right? I want you to pick up your mat. I want you to walk. And then I want you to go into town and tell everybody what God's done for you. And I want you to be victorious, right? But he knew that this victim thing is what defined this guy. That's why he asked him that question. That's what's so neat. Other people, he would ask different questions, like the the rich man. You know, he says, "What do I need to, you know, inherit the kingdom of God?" And and the guy and, and Jesus says, "Well, um, you know, you need to do love your neighbor as yourself, love the Lord your God with all your heart." You know, so and and the guy says, "Oh, I've done all this, Lord. What else do I need to do?" And Jesus looks at all the wealth and he says, "Sell everything you have and follow me." He says the man went away sad, for he had great wealth. So why did Jesus approach him this way? Because he knew that that, that money was an issue. He's not telling you to sell everything, but he told him to sell everything. He's asking this guy, look, do you want to get well? Because I'm not sure that you do. Because if you don't, then I, I can heal you, but you'll still find another reason like to be sick because you didn't really want to get well. So anyway, that's just something for you to think of as you go into the weekend. Maybe this applies to you. Maybe it applies to a loved one, you know, because remember when we have loved ones suffering from addictions, it's a two part deal. I mean, we certainly uh, want to help them, but they have to want to get well, too. Right. Um, interventions and things like that are, are, are great, right? But ultimately, the person has to want a better life for themselves, right? We have to want to get well. And God is right there with us. So it's it, we're not walking alone, right? We're, you know, in the footprints in the sand. Sometimes God will even carry us, right? But it's that will that says, yes, I want to get well. Yes, I'm willing to do what it takes. Then he says, okay, Good. We're on the same page. Then pick up your mat and walk. So, and just one day at a time, right? I mean, it's just one day at a time. Easy does it, all that stuff with sobriety, but it's just making that decision. Yes, I want to get well. So, Anyway, take that with you this weekend. Thanks for hanging out. Join me on Wednesday. It's a much longer um, teaching, and it is more of like a, a teaching, but also um, a biblical uh, recovery with also psychology, so Bible psychology recovery concepts. And what we're going to talk about is, uh, is God mad at me because I'm an alcoholic? <laughs> so I know that's like, oh my gosh, you know, and I'm sure you know what the answer is, but we're going to dig really deep into that, right? Uh, and hopefully to bring you healing. So that'll be Wednesday at 11 o'clock Pacific. So uh, till then, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for hanging out. I'd love to connect with you too. Oh, by the way, I put together uh, a sobriety resource for you. And if you're interested in it, uh, it just has things like what makes a good sponsor, um, what's the difference between AA and NA and, and celebrate recovery, why is forgiveness important, how can resentment trigger us into addiction. It's got a lot of different stuff like that in uh, helplines, um, things like that. So uh, also the 12 steps. It has the 12 steps for you, but also the uh, Bible scriptures that go with them. So if you're interested in that, you can email me. It is connect with Jody Steve at yahoo.com. Thanks, friends. Have an awesome rest of your day and weekend too. 